Welcome to the BMW 440i and 340i M Sport. Now BMW couldn't really make up their mind about which direction they're going, so they split the 4 and the 3 series. Different front ends, slightly different when it comes underneath. This car is a mild hybrid with 11 extra horsepower and has a really, really smooth stop start. Where this car is still as smooth, but when you're rolling with hybrid electric power and then the stop start starts to happen while you're rolling, that's obviously going to be smoother. This car is prettier, in my opinion, and they have tried really hard with a 440i. They've changed the nose in a way that it allows more air, and they do say it produces better cooling. It is very strange that the 340 with the exact same engine somehow didn't need the same amount of cooling. And there are other BMWs that use the exact same engine and yet don't have this front nose. This front grille is obviously controversial and a lot of people say that they've hated it, they've written it off, but in black it does look all right. It has grown on me quite a lot. I am a little worried about the reasoning. They say for more airflow, but I'm not just I'm just not seeing how much more airflow this could possibly have. In the 3 series, this area over here is completely open. Over here it's a little bit more blocked and it has this plastic piece that's blocking even more air. So really, I'm not quite sure how much air this possibly could be improving. But if BMW says so, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they've done their testing. Now, looks wise, if you put a front plate on this grill, I'm not quite sure how it would look. I think without a front plate, it looks all right and it's gonna grow on people. This is more modern and more aggressive front end. And I think BMW is trying something new here and good for them. I mean, it's been the same small kidney grills. I know they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, but with that being said, I think most people are going to see it in person and they're going to like it a lot more than pictures and videos. It just doesn't translate the same. The size does not translate very well in videos and in pictures. This front end is classic BMW and when you look at this car it takes 0.1 seconds for your brain to register that this is an absolute staple of BMW. What I do love and it's new to this modern generation of 3 Series is that the hood actually seems like it ends about halfway through the grille as if the grille is actually overlapping onto the hood. Now obviously that's not the case but visually speaking it gives you that that feeling and that looks really really nice. The airflow here seems like it's got a bigger opening than the 4 Series down at the bottom. The top portion is a little smaller and I can see why BMW says that that other grill provides more airflow but even then it's just I don't see why this engine doesn't require the same amount of airflow as the 4 Series. It's the exact same engine, exact same transmission just the hybrid electric motors in that car which is obviously a mild hybrid so that wouldn't really interfere with airflow in any way i think bmw just wasn't sure how that grill was going to be received so then they gave everybody the classic bmw front end that everybody loves so much and i do have to say that the headlights in the 3 series are way more aggressive and they look much nicer they got a little kink here and they are very squared off and aggressive where the 4 Series is a little slimmer, a little, a little bit more tear shaped. The rest of the front end is classic BMW and it's very close in style to the previous generation, just feels like a facelift more than a brand new car, but that's all right because they've done a really good job with it. Other changes going through the side of these cars, a coupe and a sedan will not look the same. They don't have the same profile, but they do have similarities. There is a very sharp cut running alongside the car through the back. The taillights are different. The exhaust tips are the same and that's fine. They're obviously floating and fake. With the hoods open, these cars are not all that different inside. They got the same engine cover. The coupe has a little bit of extra bracing under the engine, but other than that, they're basically the exact same 382 horsepower and 369 foot-pounds of torque. 
Hybrid motors in this make it a little bit of a smoother drive when you're start stopping, but other than that, there's really no difference. The coupe is surprisingly a little bit heavier, but doesn't feel any slower or faster than the sedan. They actually feel identical to drive. It is very interesting to me, the sound that these cars makes. The 440i is not equipped with the M Sport exhaust, so when you start it up, it sounds like this. It's pleasing, but when you're in here, you don't really get to hear the exhaust and the sound that comes out of it is very synthetic and artificial in a nice way. It's still a pleasing noise, it's just it feels a little bit synthetic. With an M Sport exhaust, the car does sound much better. That's a really nice noise and the revs of this car feel very aggressive. I would definitely recommend the M Sport exhaust. It's just a must for anybody that likes a more dynamic driver, likes hearing their car. It just makes a very pleasing noise. That sounds great. Feels less synthetic than the stock exhaust and it does have a little bit of a roar. It's got a little bit of a growl to it. The straight six sounds great. It just needs the right exhaust. Unfortunately, we won't be able to drive them today, but we are going to explore their interiors. The 340i's interior. The materials feel extremely premium. This place is a nice place to be. Chunky steering wheel, very, very underrated feature of most cars. Any car with chunky steering wheel like this, it feels very sporty. It's very nice to touch, extremely soft leather, aluminum paddles, everything is angled towards the driver, classic BMW. It has less angle than previous generation BMWs, but it because it has more information. The screen is now slightly bigger and a little clearer. The buttons respond better than the previous generation cars too. It has motion where you can turn the volume up and down. You can mute music, you can change channels and all that. It has really, really nice features. The center portion here has changed slightly. The shift knob has gotten smaller. I'm not a big fan of how thin the base is compared to the top, but that's more of a personal preference. I still think this overall looks better than the previous generation car. We have a lot of features in here like heated steering wheel. We have cooled and heated seats. The displays are incredible. Everything about this car is incredible. So let's dive in. First thing is first, the digital display. The crab claws that it's got going on is across all BMWs now. And even though it's clear, I'm not a huge fan of the display. I wish they'd move back to their more original round dials. I know they're trying to be modern and futuristic, but I just, I just never got behind it at the start and I'm, I'm, it, hasn't, it hasn't changed. I'm still not a huge fan of it, but the display is very crisp and very clear. It gives you all sorts of information. You can put the map on, G-meter, speedo in miles and kilometers. It gives you everything you want to know. It's very clear and easy to read, so you can't really fault it that way. The steering wheel has an incredible feel to it, and I am a huge fan of this wheel. I think if it was a flat bottom, it probably would have been my favorite steering wheel, but it is round, and some people do prefer round steering wheels to flat bottoms. I prefer the flat bottom and this car does not have that option. But with that being said, it does one thing extremely well. The opening from the top portion of the steering wheel to the center portion is so wide that I can see the whole display very clearly. And that is an incredible feature which I absolutely love from BMW. Moving on to the rest of the display, the screen is now bigger and the buttons now feel better to touch. They are very, very responsive of all of the new cars. I feel like BMW has done some of the best work with the feel and the touch of the buttons. It's quite clear again, just like the dash is very clear, the center portion is very clear. It displays a lot of information and I just don't know if you can fault anything so far in this car. One thing I don't like about this interior is that BMW has not shied away from the radio buttons. I don't know why we still need eight radio buttons, but 
in this car and in every other BMW, it's an ongoing feature and they insist on having these buttons here. I, I just don't know why, but they do it. I don't know why, but it's there if you ever need it. Just like in the Golf R a few weeks ago, this car has a phone holder and it's also a phone charger and it's quite large and it has this little rubber mat at the bottom just so your phone doesn't slide around. Really love that. The cup holders, tiny German German car things. Uh, BMW has done this little cool design where it's not just a knob, it's got these rotating arms that come out and move away. It's, it's, it's really cool. Center portion, nice and big. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any weird movements. Some old school Audis had little notches that just stopped your arm from coming down. This car doesn't have that. The seats, extremely comfortable seats. Definitely not racy or huggy, but for everyday drive, they feel incredible. They're quite soft and they got good bolstering. It doesn't seem like it has a huge bolster, but it feels bigger than what it looks like. And that's a really nice touch because it doesn't make the seat feel too chunky and yet it holds you in place and it feels very comfortable. I absolutely love the interior of this car. Up top here, we have these angel wing looking lights. They look so beautiful. It's very spacious in here. I know it's a sports sedan, but it really feels very spacious in here. You have an extremely good view. The mirrors are very big. Sunroof is very big. Uh, unlike some of the newer cars, that is just a glass roof that doesn't, that, that just doesn't open. This car opens up and it's really nice in here. I just, I don't know what else to say that this car is probably one of my favorite interiors. All the materials are very premium. BMW has done an incredible job with the interior of these cars. And the 340 also looks extremely nice on the exterior. Now let's go dive into the 440 and let's see if there's any big changes in that car. 440i. The interior has transformed into a nice deep red. Everything else feels the same. The 440i and the 340i are nearly identical on the inside. The roof line here is a little bit lower. It gives it a more compact, a little bit more sporty, but it doesn't mean that that car doesn't feel sporty. They feel almost identical. And that is a nice thing because both of these cars have incredibly nice interiors. Talking about features in particular, the map display in this car has so many cool features where it gives you the weather if you want it. It has options where you can see how many parking spots are available in random places where you visit, which blows my mind. I absolutely love things like that. The interior lighting is really nice. When the door gets opened and you're stationary with your engine on, the lighting on the door actually flashes red just to let other people know if it's very dark outside that your door is open. That's a really cool touch. And other than the lighting, which has is pretty much everywhere in these cars, BMWs and all new cars have really nice interior lighting. There's not too much to distinguish the 440i and the 340i. The dash obviously reads 440i in the digital dash there is really no other things that I can distinguish between these two cars. The rear seats of this car are quite spacious, just like the rear seats of the sedan. And being a coupe, even with a sloped roof, the seating is quite comfortable. And it has this spot at the top where it's just grooved for taller people. Not the tallest person at 5'10", I fit there really, really well. So I'm assuming that for most people, for a short drive, the rear seats of this car are more than comfortable. This car does have piano black on the inside, which is more fingerprint prone than that car that had this fake carbon. The fake carbon didn't look the most exquisite carbon out there, but it, it looked nice. The black, the black, the, it's just going to leave some fingerprints and it's going to need constant cleaning. I can see it already in this brand new car. It's, it's full of fingerprints just because your hand naturally will, will go there when you open up the cubby hold. The cubby hold here is very deep and very nice. It has a little rubber mat just so your things don't slide around or they don't rattle and make too much noise. BMW is killing it. I think these interiors are exceptional. I think the interior displays are 
some of the best in the business. The buttons all have an incredible feel, which is very, very, very nice when you go from a plastic button to an aluminum button. The cup holder space is identical and the rest of the car is basically identical. The iDrive system with the knob, it hasn't really received too many updates in terms of looks, but in feel, it definitely feels very premium and very nice and it's extremely responsive. I can't stress that enough. So these two cars, the 440i is a great coupe. It looks a little softer. So if somebody wants a soft looking car that is nice to drive every single day and still gives you that sporty BMW feeling, this is a great choice. Looking at it a little bit more, I'm not a big fan of not the actual grill, but what's underneath the grill. It's this weird little smiley face that it's got going on. That I feel like BMW is most likely going to revise, but other than the front end of this car, the rest of it, there's really not much wrong with it. It's a great car, it looks great, it drives great. Unfortunately, we can't show you that footage just yet. And the 340i, I think, is the winner out of the two. It's more BMW, it's more aggressive, it looks more M, it has more presence, it's more angular. So if someone wants the complete package without any revisions needed, this would be the car in my opinion. The gray with the blue brakes and the blue interior, it is sensational. And the rest of the car is beautiful, inside is great, it drives great. This one sounds great, the M Sport exhaust is fantastic. So I think this is the clear winner. I'm sorry to the 4 Series. I feel like it needs a refresh, some lips or some more aggressive spoilers. Therefore, the winner and the most complete car out of the two is the 340i M Sport. It's as simple as that. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us a lot. Next week, we have this gorgeous thing and it is absolutely filthy. So please forgive us for not showing you a completely clean car. It had just arrived here today and we are going to have a chance to drive this car. We're going to have a chance to test this car. We're going to launch it. We're going to show you guys how fast it is and the potential this car has. It weighs a lot, but BMW has done an incredible job with their new engines. They're not new. We also like to thank you Zahir Mulu from FAF BMW in Mississauga for all of your BMW needs. Make sure you check out our information about him and the dealership in our description. Thank you so much and have yourselves a wonderful day.